My name is Brother Sean, and I'm a member of the Teo community of Interspiritual Franciscans, an online lay monastic community of ordinary men and women who have embraced the monastic life from their monastery without walls, their own home. And this short video is a soul reflection. And in that soul reflection, I will bring to it my own experience. And I'm willing to share my own vulnerabilities and hoping that it will help you. Does spiritual arrogance hinder the soul? That is the theme for this short video. What do you think? Well, first, let us look at spiritual arrogance. How would you define it? What is it? Is it a disease? Is it a blip of consciousness? Or is it just one of those everyday things that we take for granted? Well, for me, my understanding of spiritual arrogance really came to the forefront several years ago when I realized, to my absolute horror, that I was guilty of spiritual arrogance. Not only on one occasion, but on several. And for a number of years, I was in denial about my relationship with God. I guess because my previous experiences as a nursing monk in a Catholic order left me at times feeling confused because the God I was encouraged to embrace seemed a harsh God. I was told he was a loving God. But then, of course, we were introduced to various different ideas about God and how we as monastics should connect with God. But when I left the monastery back in 74, I guess I had my own internal struggles. I was deeply wounded and angry. But I've moved on since then. But there have been times when I've sensed the presence of God speak to my heart. And here's where the journey begins. I went into denial mode. I became so assured of my own self-importance. That for me is a part of what spiritual arrogance is about. One who is spiritually arrogant <clears throat> is one who stands in the presence of God. and is more focused on ego, on how great they are. It's the big I am. Look at me, hello, and then run roughshod over those who dare to challenge us. Yes, I've been guilty of that too. But spiritual arrogance shows itself in different ways, and we are all different. Some time ago, I came across an oblate in our community who had a humongous ego, but I loved the person dearly as a brother. But every time we met, it was like a brainstorming of, look what I am, look what I've done, look at the, the academic response that I give to God. I mean, where would God be without me? It was that sort of scenario. And you felt really uncomfortable. 
And when I suggested to them about surrendering their heart, particularly as they raised the subject that they weren't hearing God, that they were on a, a downward spiral and experiencing the dark night of the soul, and they, they just couldn't hear God speak to them. So I happened to suggest, well, what about taking the I and the me out of that relationship with God? Well, it was like Third World War Three. It was just all guns blazing. And it became quite vitriolic and uncomfortable. There were lots of strong words. And who do you think you are telling me this? You're not qualified in such matters. I've got a degree in this and I've got a degree in that. And that's when the penny dropped. They were bringing their academia and they were bartering with God. I want you to love me and do this for me because I'm bringing this to you. Well, the lesson I've learned over the years is that God has no need for our academia. Yes, of course, it stands us in good stead, providing it does not dictate its terms to God. Being a Franciscan, I guess I have a wonderful role model, Francis of Assisi. He wasn't pompous. He was focused and he knew what he wanted and that was to nurture his love affair with his beloved. And I guess his example of simplicity has stood the test of time because since the 12th century many men and women have been inspired by his vision, by his integrity and simplicity as I have, as my brothers and sisters in the Teo community. And I believe that when we are called to follow the beloved in divine service, <clears throat> God accepts us as we are, warts and all. And he invites a cross-section from his family. Many are bright, Many are academic. Many are just ordinary like me. But they'd rather be doing than do the thinking. But the lesson I learned about my own spiritual arrogance was to stop playing games with God, to be true to thine own self, to be truthful. And there's no need to defend oneself before God by trying to impress God that I've done this course, I've done that course, I've done a spiritual awareness course, I'm a Reiki master, I've done a diploma in aromatherapy, shiatsu, and uh, it, the list is endless. That can be a form of spiritual arrogance too. My understanding today is that we come as we are in our vulnerability and in our availability we offer to God the gifts that God has already given us. They're not our gifts. They're God's gifts. And they're on loan. And because they're on loan, we have a duty to ensure that we care for those gifts. But not to abuse the gift by bartering it. And by becoming obsessed with one's own image, self-importance and status, they are the symptoms of insecurity. So I believe that in our insecurity, we can find security once we've surrendered the heart to love. So to recap, spiritual arrogance is a form of denial. It's a spiritual oppressiveness that denies us our truth. 
and I truly believe it has no place in one's relationship with the Creator Father Mother God who calls us by name to walk with the marginalized, to be a prayer partner for peace. We must always be on our guard that we don't lose sight of who we are as a child of God and seek to have disciples feed our ego. Ego has no place because it fights simplicity and we are called to be humble of heart and to learn to receive and say thank you and not deny ourselves our truth. I hope that's helped. Peace be with you.